I am recording. Let me grab the mic. All right, so welcome everybody to the September 4th meeting of the developer team. This is the second week of the OSC Immersion program. I'm doing documentation on the 3D printer right now, so basically towards a full manual such that wide replication can happen, streamlining everything. So, uh, but with the development team meeting, uh, let's go to the current meeting. I am recording the screen here. You can go to, I'm going to share my screen right now for you as well. Um, so developer meeting, I'm going to go, go into the dock. And we are getting back to pretty high numbers of development time, so I'm going to paste that into the, the current meeting. Uh, so with the, with the four people that we have here full-time in the immersion program, I'd like to report a little bit on that and then um, go to other, other people here. So, so we, we do have a spike in development numbers, as in the people who are now here full-time, they're pretty much on it. We've got at least four people full-time right here that are working on, on projects, primarily the 3D printer documentation. So let me paste that paste that into the current meeting. That's pretty good. Which means that it uh, looks like we might be getting to an all-time high in terms of uh, development hour numbers on a development graph, which is pretty good. You see a nice spike at the September 3rd mark which is about 270 hours in a week which is uh, matched by sometimes in 2017 we got actually like 280 hours and uh, around there a couple of times last year um, now here let's go to the people that are recording so I'm gonna <clears throat> update on the immersion program uh, and otherwise uh, we've got miles who can report and uh, let's see, Miles, while I speak today, would you mind taking some notes on the notes page, which is page number two? Uh, yes, I'm just on a smartphone, so they might not be best, but I can type. Okay. Yeah, see if uh, I can type in any comments there. Otherwise... Um, Capture what we can here. Okay. Okay, let's start the bullet numbering. Okay. So right now, um, my update is on the immersion program, so let's review that a little bit. So last week we had uh, 18 builds happening for the 3 printer. It was the boot camp process. Um, it was a kind of a hellish week, you can say, because that's the largest number of printers we, we ever try to build in a in a single event. And uh, the program was mixed between the build demonstrations of other machines, such as the filament maker, a little bit on a grinder, and just a little bit of demonstration on the other machines. Uh, lots of different lectures all over the topics on OSC development, as well as FreeCAD and other topics. But uh, as a final result, actually, uh, 10 out of the 18 people got, got their machines printing. Eight did not. It was, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of complications. We got pretty much killed on the supply chain. So what happened was um, we sourced from a lot of different places this time around because we got confident on things working. And it turned out that you cannot, absolutely cannot do that because uh, we had issues with the stepper motors and a lot of the electronics. On the stepper motors, for example, all the shafts were too long, and we had to grind them down. So we got pretty much wasted on, yeah, major, major time wastes on, on several aspects of the build uh, with faulty parts and different parts that were just different enough that it was really impossible to, to build it in an effective way. So a lot of fr frustration on the part of the people and um, not, a, not a great result. It was, you can say it was probably like the worst, worst workshop I had personally because... That meant we ju we just tried to make things work, and people weren't happy because things weren't working. Um, you know, initially it was you know first couple of days was yeah still good still good, but we, as as the time went on, we actually found out more and more problems throughout the build, like especially at the electronics level where where some boards were just um, 
just faulty and, and things didn't work. So, yeah, yeah, definite major learnings about how much preparation it really does take to do a, an effective build. And we know that you absolutely need full documentation and instructions, which uh, we had a demo machine that people can work from, but the instructions weren't complete on everything. And like a lot of times, instructions are not complete, so then, therefore the instructors try to fill that in. But with the amount of people, the amount of complexity there, that just wasn't so so easy to do. But anyway, um, right now we've got four people here for the immersion program. Um, so out of that, we're looking at, once again, hiring two people full time and two people are going to go off as independent collaborators, um, still with the goal of pretty much mastering the 3D printer uh, build and documentation. So right now, if you look at OSC Facebook workshops page, I'm going to go to there. Um, you can see the start of a full full manual and we're doing different layers for the manual. The first layer there being uh, how things work. Uh, there's the instructional layer, there's the quality control layer and so forth. So if you click on some of the recent posts on OSC Workshops Facebook page, you can access the, the manual that we're putting together. And it's going to be something like a few hundred pages long for, for detailed instructions of how, how 3D printer works and, and how you put it together. So that's pretty good. We're working on it right now and we're going to continuously publish, uh, be publishing that today and, and probably in the next, next couple of days until we get that thing done. And then the next step is for our people here to basically take that as the full quality control procedure and a full, full documentation that that in itself can serve as a guide for going A through Z th for, uh, through the 3D printer. So the, the ultimate metric of success is that I'm not needed there. I mean, typically I'm, uh, you know, uh, in this workshop, of course, I had to, I was guiding it, but ideally we, we send our four people right here to do a complete build where then I can come back and say, say, okay, well, um, this was completely done perfectly because we're documenting the, the procedure and the quality control checkpoints that people get familiar with the machine inside out. So that's where we're at, which is kind of like the highest level of, of, um, training or, or documentation that other people are now getting subjected to uh, you know while, while I know that knowledge pretty much inside out um, the trick is how do you teach that effectively to others so that others can replicate the builds independently and run workshops independently in other locations so that's where we're at uh, you can look at the OSC workshops Facebook page uh, for more info like for example today we're doing um, the ax axes um, where once again it's quite impressive and there's 14 unique parts for each of the axes so the entire motion system con contains only 14 unique parts the 14 unique parts plus the frame plus the electronics make up the whole printer so so that's um, really good on a low part count and aiming to uh, get this ready for wi wide replication uh, around the world so that link there is uh, I'm going to paste in that link. Yep. So that's where we're at. Um, yeah, lots of good learnings. And, and as, as planned, we're going to be uh, publishing our new website for the 3D printer relatively soon. We will be holding the next immersion training in April and May as planned. So we're going to continue with that and just refine the program uh, more. We got a new floor with hydronic heating inside the Hab Lab, so we're doing facility improvements, and every time we do the, the immersion program, we make some kind of an improvement uh, to the facility here so we can house people year-round for, for a rich learning experience in our program. Uh, that's pretty much my update for the, uh, for the week of the boot camp. So right now we have four more weeks of the immersion program. And from there, people will be going to different locations, namely right now California and Chicago, to run workshops with OSE full-time, do 75% research and development full-time, while running workshops about 25% of the time. That's the goal of the immersion program, as far as what we're doing here. So, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for me. So maybe, Miles, you can um, continue to update us where you left off. Let's see where you are. So uh, I added a slide. Uh, just kind of providing a short tutorial of how to build a 
a little power supply circuit and uh -huh. to, to simulate it, do a transient simulation and kind of see what's going on. Uh -huh. And so that should be in the meeting slides. And uh, I'm, I'm at, I met talked with Jesse and we're right now we're working on the uh, uh, kind of a, like a bug boost module. So uh -huh. we're working on the code for the to control the pulse width modulation and learning more about about the design and yeah, with the goal of creating a design and prototyping. Excellent, excellent. Let's see, maybe we could uh... Let's see if we can play that video just to show what we've got there. Let's see. Uh, can you... Let's see. How do I get that to play? Uh, I think I have to go into view mode. <clears throat> v, um, uh, view present. I think i got to go into present mode. Let's see if that plays here. Yeah, yeah, it does. So actually, I can escape out to YouTube and take a look at this video. Let's take a look at it. So you're in Cukes. Is that how people call it? Cukes or? Uh, I'm not sure. I've never heard anybody say it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, is yeah. Does that have sound in it, or are you just showing? You're just showing the. No, there's no sound. No sound. There's a few. There's a few text pop-ups to just kind of give, give a little more detail in terms of like uh, the keyboard shortcuts and stuff. Like uh huh. So what you're doing there is basically that has all the, <clears throat> all the components in there that you can essentially simulate. And yeah, yes. that that's really good. So can you actually do circuit design within Cukes as well? So instead of using KiCad. Uh yes, and I found uh. That's a tool that's supposed to convert keycad schematics to, or sorry, tux keys, keys schematics to keycad. So I haven't oh. tested it yet, but if that works, that would be really good. Oh, that's that's excellent because then we can do the basically have a, a simulation tool chain built right into the keycad workflow. That's pretty good. Uh huh. Okay, that's excellent. So for example, that that that's going to be a bridge a rectifier bridge there mm -hmm. yeah you're just making connections relatively easily so what was your experience with cukes like was it pretty straightforward to do it or did you t take a long time to figure it out it wasn't too bad i've used circuit simulators before uh -huh. but yeah it's, it's pretty much you just choose the components put them on there connect them uh they have a, a decent uh component library mm -hmm. and uh yeah, you can go in and if you click manage libraries, you can see all the what what exactly they are. Huh. This mm. That's excellent. I mean, this looks pretty much <clears throat> straightforward where you uh, just drag and drop components and then you type in values. And yeah, that looks looks pretty good. Um, let's see, I'm going to actually submission have a ground reference. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Just so we get through it, but yeah, no, this is this is awesome. Um, looks pretty useful. Uh huh. So you added what? What are those? Uh, measuring points. Uh, points those are measure? wire labels. So if you if you just put, place the wire labels, it will give you the voltage with respect to ground. But if you want to find the voltage across a certain component, you you would use the voltage meter and put it across. Oh, sorry, the distinction, uh, when you use the voltage meter, it allows you to do it on a, on a time-varying basis? Uh, you, with the voltage meter, you can measure the difference between any two points. Okay. But if you put a wire label, it measures the voltage of that point with respect to ground. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, that is pretty cool. So that... Let's see. So you just generated that from Cukes? That yes. Just, just did that. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Anyone, anyone who goes through these steps can make the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, would you actually mind annotating that? Like, let's see. Let me see what's on the bottom of this video. Um, yeah. No. This is really cool that uh, we have this capacity. Uh huh. 
Yeah, so you're just making the graph a little more pretty. And yeah, the rest of it's just kind of playing around with the graph. Uh huh. So, and the ng spice part. So is ng spice part of cubes? That's inside cubes. Uh, it, with uh, cubes s, it is, uh, but it's its own standalone thing. Like you could use ng spice on its own, but I think then you have to know how to make the net list and everything, which is, I think, it's not graphical, it's all code as far as I know. So Cux kind of provides a graphical way to do it. Um, and how did you get um, the ng spice into Cux? Is that like a module of Cux? Can you describe that a little bit? Um, uh, so on, on Ubuntu, I just installed, installed ng spice uh, separately, I think. Uh, and then with Qt's S, you just when you first start it up, it says there's no default simulator selected, and then you can select either the Qt slider, which is included, or uh -huh. you can choose ng spice. Uh -huh. And you just have to provide it the location of the binary, the executable that's for ng spice, and it will automatically do it. Uh huh. So you wanted to do ng spice as opposed to the Qt sim simulator itself. Yes, just because we're trying to do a simulation, the Qxator is quite slow. I see. I see. So you downloaded, um, let's see, ng spice. Yeah, maybe if you could put comments like that or like a description in the video. Let's see, how much of it do you have on your log? Uh, let me see what you got on your log there. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Buck boost converters, learn... Power stages, yeah, okay, it would be good if we we got, okay, we got a wiki page for Cukes, Saturday, August 25, okay, cool, mm-hmm, so you got the exact example usage video, which takes you to YouTube, great, um, ah, okay, can you do maybe like just a little bit like in your like on your Qx page, a little bit about the setup, how to. So, so running, running the above simulation, like more details. Yeah, I can, I can provide information on setup. Yeah, like how do you install ng spice and where do you get it? Links to that and so forth. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, more, yes, yeah, so if you can maybe do a little more details. As far as the buck boost converter, let's see where you at on that. So far, it's mostly just learning on my side. Um, Jesse has has put together some code for the pulse width fluctuation. Uh huh. Using Arduino. Yes, I think so. Okay, so basically, and what is the, do you know the limit of normal PWM on Arduino? Is that about a kilohertz or 100 kilohertz? No, it seems like, like a little, little over 100 kilohertz. 132 was the limit, kilohertz was the limit that someone said. Uh-huh. Is that 132 kilohertz, is that readily accessible or do you have to do some tricks or? Uh, I'm not sure, it shouldn't be too hard though. Yeah. Well, that would be, yeah, that would be definitely good for, I mean, possibly even the induction furnace. We'll see if we can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So design, this page is a good guide. Yeah. And and the process on that, are you actually trying to simulate that within Qx as well? Uh. Yes, right now I'm reading just a, a tutorial on on focus computers, but then yeah, the next step will be to do a simulation and see if I can design something that does what we want. And well, then it'll be yeah, prototyping and testing. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Um, copy image to our dev demo. Um, do a funny paste in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, 
That's excellent. Excellent. Um, let's see. I guess nobody's in on a meeting at this time. So let's see what else to talk about here. So for anyone who's listening, um, what else to say? We are, um, yeah. So as we said on on the front of the documentation for the the three D printer, our next step then is to publish the full manual, and we'd like to have different people feedback on it to see if it's uh, if people can actually understand it fully. And this should be like the you know the ultimate version. We've got five people working on it here full time right now. Uh, Miles, also, if you want to take a look at it, were you? Um, Hello. Yeah. Who, yep. Um, Sorry, I just I just dropped out for like a minute. Okay, okay. Wait, is that two people on right now, or is that just just yourself? Oh, I think I, I somehow am in the meeting twice. Okay, okay. okay. Right. So, um, were you ever thinking about building the the D three D three D printer or circuit mill from our our set? Uh, yeah, I mean, at some point, I probably wouldn't be. I don't have a lot of atomic resources, but something I'm interested in at some time in the future. Yeah, yeah. So if you can help out, I mean, one thing I would like to ask is if you want to take a look at the existing manual on Facebook that I put at that link there. Um, take a look at some of those posts and see if it's absolutely transparent and, and clear, like how you put this thing together. Does it actually make sense? And if it doesn't, please comment on on any of the pictures or on a. I think Facebook post comment is actually pretty good to to get some feedback on whether the whole step procedure is making a lot of sense. We're doing it pretty much exhaustive detail. Like I'm seeing, we've already got. Let's see for the x the y axis. We already have uh, let's see 26 comments, which are 26 steps. We had about 26 steps for the frame itself, and I think this is going to be uh, longer. So yeah, a few hundred pages that we're going to have all together. But but yeah, if you want to take a look at that and give us some feedback, that would be great as well. And for anyone else who's listening to this video recorded, uh, please take a look at the material on the OSC Workshop's Facebook page. Um, yep. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So I think that's pretty good for now, since given that nobody's else else is on a meeting we're busy here documenting so let's um let's do it again next week i think uh for us here since we've got the immersion program launch time here like 12 30 is good for us uh so yeah does that work for you next week miles yeah it should be good okay okay that sounds good and do you have any any other questions or anything on um, uh no it's great Okay. Check out the documentation. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. So, pretty good work. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it seems like that totally fits with the with the KitKat workflow, and, and that's relatively easy to learn. So we'll see. We'll see about that. Okay. Okay. Well, that's um, that's good for now. So, thank you. Then we'll meet again next week. At 12.30, I'll send out an email to everybody letting people know that we want to shift the time up to the 12.30 a little earlier, which means lunchtime here, So as we have the immersion program going for the next four weeks as well. So, yep. Um, yeah, so thank you very much then, and we'll talk again next week. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.